Hey everyone, Randall here with the, uh, the Hobby Shop here in Leander, Texas. So today, uh, it's gonna be a really quick video. I'm gonna talk about the JSM titanium uh, battery pulls here. They're not your typical battery pulls. There's a little bit of uh, finesse that you need to actually get wires soldered onto this. Uh, and I just wanna kind of give my tips and tricks on how I do it. Um, everyone has their own technique and that's fine. Um, but there's a couple of things you definitely wanna have. You wanna have some sort of soldering jig possibly some pliers, of course a soldering station here. We're using the uh, Horizon Hobby Duratrax, Trax Power, uh, TX955 soldering station. Um, you wanna have your solder here. This is leaded solder. Um, we'll do another video kind of talking more about uh, general soldering and what you want in the RC uh, market and in the hobby itself when you're using that and some flux and a couple other various tools. So what I'm gonna first do here is that I'm going to add just a tiny bit of flux to the bullet here in the cup. And what flux does, flux actually becomes a corrosive when it's heated up. Sorry about that. Once you heat flux up, it becomes corrosive. Let me find somewhere to put that. Uh, and what that does is that it will take the first layer of oxidation off of metal. Uh, so you really kind of want to put flux on most things just to clean it up, get it ready. It makes the solder flow easier. It'll, it'll bond and adhere to the metal a whole lot easier than if it was to just be completely bare. So now that we have the flux on there, we're just going to heat it up here. And typically I run the solder heat at about mm, 700 degrees, 800 degrees, somewhere around there, just to uh, help with the flow. The broader your tip, the, the more surface area you're going to uh, make when you're soldering. So smaller tips will be a little more difficult to use. So always make sure you're using the correct tip with your uh, solder here. As you can see, it's kind of puffing up with the flux. I'm just kind of getting that in there heating this up yeah, you probably can't hear it but it's definitely hissing after that I'm gonna clean it up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol here just to get the, the leftover coating out. And from there, cleaning the soldering tip. Here I'm using a tip tinner. Now you could just use the solder and tin the tip. I like using tip tinner. You're just gonna run it like that and like that and you're gonna have a tin tip on both sides. But I am, however, going to tin each of these bullets with some solder here. So we apply a little heat to the metal itself and then feed some solder in there. Got a nice silver color there. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. Get a nice coating. You don't want too much on the top because that's going to create an issue when you're trying to slide the bullet uh, connector, this body over it. It's going to uh, increase the thickness. The tolerances here are pretty tight. And that's really what this video is talking about is those tolerances and how to avoid um, having issues where you need to shave it down or anything like that. Gonna feed some more solder. And you can have it pool inside the cup, that's fine. It's just, like I said, on that edge, you want that to kind of be uh, pretty clean, very thin. Make a nice little pool in there. Out of the way, next is your wire, uh, what you're gonna use to solder it to. Now, typically when you solder, you wanna tin the soldering iron, uh, the first material, and then tin the second material. 
This time around, I'm not going to tin the wire that goes on here, as when you tin the wire, you're actually strengthening the, uh, the fibers, because when the uh, solder hardens, it's going to just become a solid like mass. Uh, and that solder will also kind of run back, where you, even where it's sheathed, it's gonna run back here, so it's gonna, get, it's gonna be less flexible. Um, and really, we do want this tip to be flexible. I believe this is pre-soldered, but they use very little uh, typically when you do your own soldering, you'll use more than what they have at the factory or anything. So what we want is for this to be flexible and you can kind of move it and push it uh, and flatten it out because we want it to sit directly in that cup. This one is a little short, so I'm going to do uh, some trimming here. I'm going to try to get some more length. So we got a little more length here. He said this is tinned out. Helping hands are always nice. Um, you can get those at any store, big box store, any you know, online store. You can grab a set of helping hands. Right here, I'm just kind of warming this up, seeing if I can break this solder up a little bit that they put in here already. So I'm gonna have to fight it a little bit. So I'm gonna show you tinning with just solder. So when you tin with just solder, you're just running it like that. Just kind of blobbing it on there. So with this, let's just take one of those out. And you know, take your time when you do this. Get, get everything in position that you need to get in position. Um, you don't need to rush on any of this really. So what we're gonna do here, you know, we're gonna add a little bit of heat. Let's see if we can get this to liquefy just a little bit. It doesn't take long at 700, and this is at 750 degrees, so it shouldn't take long at all. So now it's liquefied. We're gonna drop that in. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to press. Like you can, I wouldn't do this with everything, especially with the electronics. Uh, so try to do your bullets before you wire into an ESC or motor or anything like that. And I'm just pressing here. And hopefully I won't have to do the opposite side where there's absolutely no solder uh, tend to the tip. Because since this is 10, this is a little harder. So it's going to take a little more time for the heat to transfer. And this wire is going to get pretty warm. That's why I said helping hands are always nice. Or just a pair of pliers. Just grabbing a pair of pliers, you can use that um, to hold. If you need to kind of move your hand around. I can start to see some of the solder from the bottom seat to the top. So it's definitely getting through. You're just trying to press flat. You know, we're just pressing flat here. This is why a wide, like a chisel tip, a wide chisel tip is better than a, a narrow one. You're just gonna have more heat, like more surface area heat happening here. So as you see, it's starting to flatten out here. It's getting a little, a little flatter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little more tip tenor. And that's just gonna help transfer heat from the iron through the wires down to the plug. And yeah, I can hear the wires kind of scraping as I move the iron around. So that means like the, the threads are kind of separating. So, so that's a good, good indicator. So now we're done. Uh, we're gonna hold this just for a little bit, just so it cools off. Solder sets. And that should, yeah, see, so it's good. It's solid on there. So that's pretty solid. And it's pretty flat. I don't know if you can see that profile there. Pretty flat there. So this wire is still kind of warm. Uh, I'm not going to do the next step just yet. We're going to let it cool off just a little bit. 
here and then I will show you how we're gonna put this cap on there. It is titanium and it has a chance to scratch. So you definitely wanna use like a cloth of some sort when you're doing this and that can be a little tricky. But if your soldering job is good, you shouldn't have any issues with putting uh, some force and pressure on the bullet. It will, um, it'll be able to handle that. It's a little warm. So what I like to do is I like to grab a microfiber cloth. And we'll kind of get that there. I'm just checking the profile here. Should be pretty good. You can see you got clearance. And so what I'm doing here is that I'm just putting, you know, I wrapped it in the cloth and I have the, the, the blades here. One is on the on the bullet pull itself and the other is on the bullet. Uh, there's kind of at an angle to kind of get both so I can have some force and it'll take a couple of tries. And this may actually happen off camera. <laughs> And it's going to take, this is probably one of the hardest parts, but that was just me. I had it wrapped in the cloth. I had one of the, one side there of the pliers, the other one here, and just push it together, just snap it together. It'll snap into place. Uh, let me grab that. And then the last part here is a 1.5 millimeter driver to drop the set screw in and just keep tightening until you till it pretty much bends on itself like that it's pretty tight you can give it a couple more turns in the box in the package there will be a silicone tube as well so there'll be a silicone tube in there and you could just feed this tube, they're almost the same width. So you could feed it through, you could run any sort of, I'm not gonna run the whole thing because really I should have ran it this way and then pulled it back down. So it'd sit like that and it would sit pretty flush against there. Wires protected. I mean, as it stands, it's pretty good. On the bottom, it was an uneven cut on my part. So you see that it's just, it's not even but on one side it's flush and it becomes less flush because I cut it at an angle. So I, you know, just need to make sure you use a very, you know, use sharp materials, use sharpened blades when you're cutting so you get clean cuts. And that is pretty much it for the JSM uh, titanium bullet plug uh, battery pulls. And that's uh, just a quick way of how to get it done. I appreciate you guys and uh, have a great day.